Back in Jericho, everybody knows about Zacchaeus. And they'll tell you all about him. They'll tell you Zacchaeus gets paid. No matter what. He doesn't care who pays or where the money comes from. Clean money, dirty money, doesn't matter. Getting paid matters. And Zacchaeus makes sure he gets paid. They might tell them Zacchaeus costs them more than money. Mothers and fathers and grandfathers and aunties lose a little dignity every time he comes around. Folks feel a little less than fully human once Zacchaeus finishes up talking to them. He's that kind of guy. That's what they say about Zacchaeus. And he knows it. It's been a long time since Zacchaeus trusted anybody. Now he's got people who work for him. And he's got some professional connections. He's got some neighbors who admire his yard and his car and who envy his fancy vacation. But it's been a long time since Zacchaeus believed that he had a friend. He knows what kind of stories people tell about him. And sometimes, late at night, he wonders if they're right. I think I know the kind of stories that get told about me. I know by heart the stories I tell myself about me. I'm the one who knows the answer. I'm the one who gets things right. I'm the one who makes sure the wheels stay on. I'm fine. I've got this. I'll handle it. I'll sort everything out. You just let me at it. That's the story that I tell me about me. And I know it so well. I tell it all day long. And I'm not sure that's a good thing. The stories we tell Matter. They're like containers that give shape to feelings and relationships and experiences. Maybe you've noticed how telling someone who cares about you about a, a difficult day, how that makes it a little bit easier to bear. It puts things in perspective, right? Because once you've told the story, it's a little easier to understand what happened. You see how one thing led to the next thing and then to the next thing. And you've shaped that experience into the form of a story. The beginning and a middle and an end. The stories we tell make me. They help us see the shape of our lives. And a lot of times, that's a good thing. But sometimes, it's not. Sometimes, the stories we tell get us stuck. Get us stuck. Maybe you know what I mean. Maybe you're the good girl. Or uh, maybe you're the baby of the family. Maybe you're the one who always helps out. Always helpful. Maybe you're the one that everyone expects to see fail. Maybe you're the straight A student. Or the clown who everybody loves, but no one takes seriously. Hear these stories. 
stories from the time we're children. We hear them over and over again until we start, we start to tell them ourselves, we tell them about ourselves, to ourselves. Teachers, parents, partners, bosses, media, marketers, everybody has a story they want to tell about us. And sometimes those stories get us stuck. So I wonder, I wonder if Zacchaeus is lying awake at night feeling stuck. Maybe he just feels numb, and flat, and dissatisfied, like he missed a turn somewhere. He wound up in a life he doesn't like very much. Maybe he's felt like that for a long time. And today is the last day that he can tolerate it. Something needs to shift. So he goes out looking for a change. There's a crowd in the street. They're shouting and pressing in toward a group of people listening to one man who's speaking quietly at the center. Nobody's paying any attention to Zacchaeus, and he can't find a way into the crowd, so he climbs a tree. Yeah, he did. He climbs a tree. The way the story is told, he climbs a sycamore tree, and he leans out over the highlands of that tree to see what's going on. And Jesus sees him. Sees him and knows him. Not the stories they tell about him. Not the wrong turns and the disappointments. No. Jesus sees him for who he really is. Beloved child. Precious in God's sight. Jesus sees a man who needs to make a change for the sake of his soul. The way I imagine it. Jesus saw Zacchaeus hanging on to that sycamore tree, went up high in the sky, and he grinned. <laughs> and he laughed with delight because he can see. He can see how badly Zacchaeus wants to be seen and known and healed. And that longing, that 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 desire to be healed is all the opening that God needs to make a change in him. Jesus laughs. And he calls out, hey, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house, buddy. <laughs> and the way Zacchaeus felt so happy. <laughs> he felt so happy. And he hurried down the trunk of that tree and he welcomed you into his home. That's a good story. That's the kind of story that will set you free, isn't it? Hmm. There is a deeper story to be told about all of us, every one of us, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey. That story begins and ends with love. If you have been told all your life that you're no good, I am here this morning to tell you that the God of love who holds your life formed you in love, by love, and for the purpose 
And if you believe, if you really believe deep down that you are only as good as you look on the outside, friends, I am here to tell you that God sees your heart, your beautiful heart, and longs to set you free. And if you believe that you are only lovable because of what you give to others, I'd like you to know, I'd like you to know how much goodness God longs to pour into your life, to give you. He has knows that story. He knows that story because he's lived it, and it has set him free. Jesus saw him and knew him and called him by name. And after a long, hard night, joy came in the morning. He did. He found a new story to tell. Zacchaeus discovered the joy that belongs to generous people, those who know the freedom of blessing the world through their gifts. And he made a public pledge to give away half his wealth there in the street for anyone who had ears to hear it. And Zacchaeus pledged to make reparations. He did. He promised to repair the damage he'd done fourfold. And the world began to heal. This is our story, too. My story, your story, too. And the better we know it, the more it will set us free. That's why over the next nine weeks, we will be telling the stories that set us free, right here in worship at Plum Church. We'll begin next week with the testimonies of our youth as they lead worship next Sunday right here and tell us how their lives were changed by their service trip this summer. And then Caroline, the week after that, will testify to the life-changing power of story in her own life, September 1st. And then after Labor Day, after Labor Day, we'll begin following the narrative lectionary. Say that with me once. The narrative lectionary is our new best friend. We're going to follow this guy through the full arc of scripture, beginning with Genesis and moving through the liberation stories of the Hebrew Bible, and eventually the narrative lectionary will lead us into the stories of the prophets foretelling the change of the world. And then after Christmas, we'll turn to the Gospel of Mark and let it tell us the story of Jesus. I invite you to join me for a closer exploration of these stories in Wednesday Bible study this fall. Say that one with me. Wednesday Bible study at Plymouth Church. All right. I will begin leading a weekly daytime Bible study on Wednesday, September 4th at 11 a.m. right down the hall in the Mayflower Room. And during the six weeks of Plymouth Academy, later this fall, I will add an evening session. Uh-huh, I heard you. I heard you ask that question already. An evening session for those who find that more convenient. All are welcome. All. No previous knowledge of the Bible in any way, shape, or form is necessary. I hope you will join us. We're going to tell some great 